Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and this is the first in a series of videos on recording sort of a minimal neoclassical type track. Um, sort of the type of thing you might hear like in a Netflix documentary or something like that. Um, and mostly this is going to be done with Spitfire Audio's new solo strings. They're incredible. They're the strings I've been dying for. Um, they're really intuitive and easy to use, and I've got a link up top and down below to my full review of them and the demos I did for those. Um, so if you want to check out the strings, go ahead and do that. Um, it's not an affiliate or anything like that. They're just really good strings, um, as you'll hopefully see. Um, so I've already come up with a bit of an idea using a piano, and I think it's really helpful when doing this to play out your parts on a piano first, just so that um, you can have an idea of what you want. Um, so this song um, is actually, would technically be in C major, but I'm sure it's, I, I don't remember my modes anymore, um, but it has a very minor feel to it. So I'm gonna play it for you, um, just the piano part. I've cleaned it up a bit. And I, I don't know if this is the exact piano part that would stay in. I could see it staying in the final version of the song with some tweaking, um, but really this is more just to give me a feel from when I record. You'll also notice that I've sort of labeled intro verse chorus up here. That's not actually what these parts are, it's just where the chords change. So. I'm just gonna play it once so you can hear. So I imagine this is probably gonna be three videos. That's what I'm planning anyways. So in this one, we're gonna try and do the, uh, the basses and maybe the cellos. Um, so let's go over and load up the trusty contact player. And here's Spitfire solo strings. And we're gonna go to the boss. And for this, um, I, I imagine it's probably going to be the long string, and the progressive verb seems to be the best for longer notes, but this could be slightly faster, so let's see. And I apologize, it's probably going to be really hard for you guys to hear the bass, so I'll turn it way up. Um, so those are some of the cool sounds it makes. To make any of this work really well, you've got to be, uh, I've got the mod wheel. By default, the mod wheel is, it, is doing the dynamics. Um, and then you really need to automate the volume and a few other things. I've turned down the vibrato a bit. So let's take a first pass at the song. I'll record just as I go along, probably, and then try and be more inspired from that. Um, but the, the main chords are D minor in the red spots, A minor in the orange, G7, G major 7 on all yellow, and sort of a C and C sus type, maybe even C7, C9, I don't know, in this brown part. So, um, but I'll probably just mostly stick root notes on the bass part. Okay. And we'll turn the click on for now, sorry. I 
I just, I just kind of came up with the idea that I want. Okay. Um, so I don't think bass long is quite the right sound. Um, and there's all these different articulations to choose from. Um, or maybe flau tondo is more. Oh, okay. We'll just turn it up here instead. Now we gotta turn it up there too. Okay. These defaults are pretty quiet volume. That's the perfect sound I want. Um, we just need to crank the volume. Something to that effect. Um, so let's start this over again. Most of that, except for this little walk down uh, here, no, the walk up. I didn't like. So. Hold this C. Okay. And I should quantize this at some point, but we'll just keep going for now because the amount to quantize, well, all right, we'll select it all and we'll do it to 90%. But sometimes you. Yeah, that doesn't, with some of these classical strings, you have to hit the attack prior to the sound kicking in to get it to sort of have that swell, and so quantizing by rote doesn't work. Um, all right, so now let's go with a cello. Cello. To quote Jack Black, or paraphrase. Um, and I will probably do two cellos on this. One sort of... Um, Maybe spiccato. Doesn't that just sound lovely? And then we'll probably do a longer one as well. And maybe they won't all play throughout. It's probably way too loud now.
fast enough. Right, and this we can probably quantize, no problem, because these are short notes that attack when you put it down. Um, so now just a little bit of music theory. Um, basically, I was playing the bass more or less like you'd play any old bass here. Um, root notes, a bit of thirds, a bit of flat sevens, some passing tones to connect to the chords, uh, but mostly the root notes of the chord, and the cello was just doing the exact same thing. Uh, it was just doing it with more rhythm um, and some different passing. And we probably pan it off to one side. And then we'll do another longer cello track here. Um, and we'll do a long progressive, maybe. We'll see if it's the right sound. And I'm literally going to copy the bass down to here. And it's just going to be an octave up. Or maybe two octaves up, depending on what sounds like. Oh, all right, it all got backwards. But of course. All right, so close you. We've got the cello long progressive, and now we want to copy the bass to the long cello. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so that's that's a good start there. We'll leave off on this video um, for now. We've got sort of the backing. Um, in the next video, I think we'll probably do the violas for bringing in some of those thirds and fifths. And um, maybe, maybe we'll do violins or maybe we'll do some just horns or something subtle just to give a little more texture. Uh, but stay tuned. Um, I'll go into more of what I'm doing, why and how. And thanks for watching.